Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to see what led to the ending of the Cartoon Network series, Codename Kids Next Door. Today's video was requested by Nati Cristal. Now, let's get to it. Roll the intro. Codename Kids Next Door was created by Tom Warburton. After graduating college, Warburton was able to become an intern at Buzzo Associates Inc. He was able to land his gig after looking at the industry guide in an animation magazine. He just went to different companies and just kept bothering them until someone hired him. I took the animation magazine had their industry guide and I looked at all the places that were in New York and I would occasionally go up to New York and knock on doors. And eventually, a couple suckers um, at a company called Buzzco Associates hired me. I was hired at Buzzco as an intern, and I did everything from making deliveries to uh, washing animators' coffee cups to um, just cleaning up the studio afterwards to uh, you know, setting up for parties. Um, but at the same time, I was also learning in betweening and I was learning uh, you know, in campaign, and I was getting paid to, you know, to, to, to do this. After leaving Buzzo, Warburton worked on other shows like Doug, Schoolhouse Rock, and Beavis and Butthead. Like, Warburton was able to pitch Codename Kids Next Door because he knew Lena Zeminski from their time at the Azifa Film Festival. Lena Zeminski became the executive producer at Cartoon Network. Warburton created a Bible and got in contact with Zeminski to pitch his idea for a pilot. I had, uh, I had known someone from uh, the ASIFA. ASIFA is the International Animation Society. I was a member of the New York chapter. And there was a woman there who uh, became president of ASIFA East right when I got there, named Linda Semensky. And she later became uh, a big shot at Cartoon Network. So I knew, I knew who to pitch my show to. So I put together a Bible, like this. And I described the kids, uh, you know, I described each character, what the show was about, and I sent it down to them. After the pilot was created, it was put on Cartoon Network's The Bit Pit program. The Bit Pick is a program where they air different cartoon pilots, and the viewer could call to vote for their favorite pilot. The Kids Next Door episode, No P in the Ool, won the Viewer's Choice Contest, and the cartoon was greenlit for a full series. And, and that year, they decided they were gonna let the viewers decide what was going to become a series. Because I had to find out on the air, just like everyone else, that I want. So all summer long, they're airing, they're airing the, the episodes, and then there's one weekend where you could vote. And you could vote by phone, by, uh, by email, and every time you could vote, you could only vote like t two times per phone. So I would call from my cell phone, my wife's cell phone, my phone. Um, and I put the word out to everyone. I put, I put the word on like Pokemon message boards, vote for my cartoon. And um, so then the, the day the Big Pick weekend came and my wife and I are sitting in front of the TV and they said, here's the big winner. And Kids Next Door started on black and the first sound you heard was the sound of a phone ringing. And I was like this close to the TV screen. My wife had me in a headlock and all I needed to hear was this half a beat of that phone ring. And I just, I, I just put my head down on the floor, <laughs> and my wife just started screaming and running back and forth, and and the, then the phone rang. Yo, number five here. Number four. Three, two, and I am number one. We are the, the kids, kids next door. door. That's our code name. You dig? And we need all of you out there watching to join us in our mission against the grown-ups, the real grown-ups, not the muddle-headed ones you may be used to. <laughs> So come on, become an operative. Either you're in or you're old. We're losing the frequency. Blast.
Codename Kitchener's Door premiered on December 6th in 2002. The series ran for six seasons with a total of 78 episodes and three TV specials. The series follows the adventures of a group of kids that fights against adult and teen villains with the help of advanced 2x4 technology. These kids are a part of a global organization composed of children from ages 5 to 12. Each Kitchener's Door operative is given a code name, which is usually a number. Well, um, except for Tommy, whose code name was number T. Being a global organization, the kids next door have different sectors that are stationed all over the earth, with the main base being stationed on the moon. Most sectors are built around a giant treehouse that serves as a home base for the operatives in that area. The series mostly focuses on the operatives from sector V, number one and two played by Benjamin Diskin. And the kangaroo says, coleslaw? I thought you said chainsaw! <laughs> <laughs> Number three, played by Lauren Tom. Number four, played by D. Bradley Baker. And number five, played by Chris Summer. <laughs> the kids next door follow their oath for protecting other kids from evil adults until the age of 13 when they're decommissioned. For those who don't know, decommissioning is a process where they wipe the memories of the operator's time in the kids next door, usually when they reach the age of 13. But sometimes there are special cases where some operatives can keep their memories and be promoted to the teen version of the kids next door and go undercover while helping the younger members in secret. Some examples will be Chad, who was revealed to be an undercover agent all this time. And also, Maurice is also part of this teen organization. The inspiration for kids next door came from Warburton watching X-Man. X-Man, I was a huge X-Men, X-Men fan, and you know, like I loved yeah, that a lot. That's a lot where Kids Next Door came from. I love the idea of an international team of experts, you know, fighting together and uh, against crazy, crazy supervillains and stuff like that. Codename Kids Next Door was one of the most popular shows on Cartoon Network. One thing I love about this series is that the two by four technology is made from household appliances or things you could find laying on the ground or in the dumpster. And I always wanted one of these weapons when I was younger. I just realized while making this video, this weapon is called a bottle cap. I also like how they put other Easter eggs of other shows in this series, like how one of number three stuffed animals looks like a certain cartoon sheet. I'm assuming it was Mo Willems' idea to put that there as a reference since he was one of the writers for Conan Kiss Next Door. It was also pretty funny that number five's dad was Bill Cosby, but this joke didn't really age that well. Throughout the series, the K and D fought against many different villains like the delightful children from down the lane, Father, the Common Cold, Night Brace. Count Spankulite is also considered a villain, which I kind of disagree with because usually he only punishes bad kids. In some scenarios, he's even on the same side as the kids next door. So shouldn't he be like an anti-hero or something? There was even one episode where Sector V set the guy up and made him do a false spanking. Oh, bad luck, Count. And you are such a great member of the team. <laughs> really? Oh, thank you, number one. That means a lot. I thought you said that we sent Count Spankula to the judge's house on purpose so we could get rid of him. And then we just like when we tricked him into spanking that kid Carlos before. <laughs> you miserable. My favorite villain in the series has to be the Toilinator. Yeah, he's dumb, but when the Toilinator gets serious, he fucks everybody up. <laughs> What I love about this show is that even though the series can be episodic, there's still an ongoing plot. There's even a bit of lore, like how it's revealed in the Kids Next Door movie that number one's dad is the legendary operative, number zero. Dad, you are number zero. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh my, I can't wait to tell everyone. They'll be like, you're the coolest number one. And I'll be like, yeah, I am, aren't I? And we can go on missions together and battle evil adults. And, oh, my own dad is really number zero. 
This is one of my favorite straight to television movies, so I'll be making a separate video on this soon. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, did anyone ever figure out what the fourth flavor was? When I was younger, I thought it was French vanilla because French vanilla had a golden color. Anyways, the series won an award for best television series at the Owada International Animation Festival for the episode Operation Archive. Kirsten's Door also had two video games, Operation Video Game for the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, and Operation Soda for the Game Boy Advance. I personally never played any of the console or the handheld games, but I used to play the Flash games on CartoonNetwork.com, like the one where you create your very own operative, and I also play Operation Startup. In the final episode of the series, the members of Sector V are all grown up, with their memories as KND operatives restored. Number 3 and 4 are now married, number 3 is the head of the Rainbow Monkey Corporation, and number 4 is a doctor who graduated at the top of his class at Harvard. Number 2 and 5 are also married, but it's not known what to do for a living. The episode is set up as a live action interview in order to find out what happened to number one after the birthday cake mission. Just a quick recap for those who don't remember, whenever the delightful children down the lane have a birthday party, the KND usually try to steal their birthday cake. This time the cake was took by number 74.239. He says he'll get a cake to whoever wins the scavenger hunt, with one of the items on the list being father's pipe. <laughs> Later in the episode, we learned that number one was chosen to represent Earth and the Galactic Kids Next Door, an organization dedicated to prevent adult tyranny throughout the universe. Number 74.239, will you please tell me what exactly is going on around here? Don't you get it yet? You've been chosen to join the Galactic Kids Next Door! Only one kid from every planet is picked, and you're it! We also learned that number one's mom was also a former Kids Next Door operative with the code name number 999, and she was also the first female operative to join the KND. Dad? Mom? What are you doing here? We came to see you off, dear. Mom, you know about all this? About the Kids Next Door? Well, of course. They were nice enough to recommission Number Zero and me so we could say goodbye. You were a Kids Next Door operative too? Only the first girl operative in the seventh age of the Kids Next Door, Number 999 herself. Shortly after the rest of the team meets up with Number One, he hands the shades to Number Five and tells her that she's in charge of Sector V again. The team says the final goodbye. Shortly after, Father arrives, demanding his pipe back. But as soon as he arrives, everyone and their equipment was gone. Agile Uno, I am done playing games with you, boy. Give me back my pipe, this! No. No. No! At the end of the episode, we see grown-up versions of the KND crying after reminiscing on what happened when they were younger. It turns out that the interviewer was actually father, and he was using this as a way to find out the location of number one. As soon as number five leaves, she gets a phone call from a mysterious person and tells them they told father everything he wanted to know, and also they'll meet them on the moon base. The mysterious person is revealed to be number one himself. Number five welcomes him back, and the series ends. Hello? Yeah. We told him everything he wanted to hear. We'll meet you up on the moon base, okay? Oh, and number one, welcome back. Kids Next Door final episode aired on January 21st in 2008. The reason why Kids Next Door ended was because of the old standard Cartoon Network had, where a show wouldn't go past six seasons. Warburton had plans to make a sequel to Kids Next Door called The Galactic Kids Next Door, and even made an animated trailer, but Cartoon Network wasn't interested in continuing the series. Can you hear me? No, no, you gotta push this thingy over here! No, don't! Oh, now look what you did! Rainbow monkeys, rainbow monkeys! <sighs> Enough already with the rainbow crud!
Come in, Number Vine. Are you there? We love you! You did not! This is an official Intergalacticos call! Intergalactic! Uh, whatever. You don't say I love you! Earth Operatives? Are you there? Do you read me? Oh! Hi, Number Vine! Numbers three and four, greetings. Our preparation's underway. Yep. We posted the video just like you said. Excellent. Now, everyone on Earth will... Wait, you what? We posted the video. All we had to do was press this button right here. Hey, that's not it. But I love this song. Rainbow monkeys, rainbow monkeys. Idiots! You weren't supposed to post the video until after the countdown ends. Well, how are we supposed to understand all those weird alien numbers? Yeah, we never studied Canadian in school. They're not Canadian, you Earth dope! That's the Galactic Standard Base 10 numerical system. It combines the pictographic treatments of Galactic Ancient Base 12. Oh, for the love of. Now my human disguise is acting up! Who was running the tech department while I was on Earth? Number Moron! Tell me about it! Holy f. She looked better as a plant. I heard that! We messed up your dumb internet video thing. It's not like it had any cute cats in it. Anyway, what do we do now? Now? Now you get everyone off that planet! Uh, everyone? everyone? Everyone. Every kid's next door operative. Every adult. Every boy, girl, man, woman, and child. Because they're coming. And they're coming soon. Oh. Do it now! A Class G planet. The only one in its locality capable of sustaining carbon-based life due to its abundance of water and atmosphere. Home to over 8.7 million different life forms, the planet's dominant species is human, of which there are approximately 7 billion. Of that number, more than three quarters are over the age of 13. In other words, adults. That's why I have no choice but to do this. No! My family is there! Your family! Our friends! It's ruled by adults. Infested. Too far gone. What about Sector V? Hoagie, Cookie, Wallaby, and Abigail! Abby would never let you do this. There. Do we need more proof of where this one's allegiance lies? Species indicative. Ah, this human North North, a galactic level operative North. Ah, ah, North. There are no human galactic level operatives. Uh, actually, that's not true. There was the famous, uh, wait, uh, oh, for the love of, I can never figure out the privacy features on these interplanetary conference calls. Yeah, and now my human disguise is acting up. Who was running your tech department while I was on Earth? Never moron! Who are you calling moron? You've been on Earth so long, you reek of a doubt. Just like that one! Oh, my God. The decision does not come lightly. The decision is... Don't do it, Nigel! This isn't what the kids next door is about! Success! The decision is not the Galactic 
romantic kids next door rules! Naju Uno, what have you done? <laughs> At the time of this recording, Tom Warburton has just finished wrapping up the production of The Muppet Babies. Ben Diskins, the voice of number one and number two, is voice of Nuru. And The Miraculous Ladybug, Lauren Tom, the voice of number three, is the voice of 13 in the Young Justice series. D. Bradley Baker, the voice of number four, voices Reed Dago in Young Justice, as well as doing additional voices for The Owl House. Chris Summer, the voice of number five, voices Bunny Star in the Patrick Star Show. Despite being one of the best series that Cartoon Network ever produced, Cartoon Network won't renew the series. Tom Warburton also said that he was willing to work on a continuation of the series if Cartoon Network was willing to greenlight the project. Hopefully one day we'll see some sort of reboot or continuation in the future. Who knows, we might even get another movie. Only time will tell. Sorry.